Wrestling fans around the corner, around the world. I'm Dan Marotti. And I'm Brian Nobbs, Nasty Boy. A brand new Wrestling Insider Special Edition is next. Wrestling fans, can you feel it? The ninth annual Paul Bearer Holiday Headlocks Toy Drive Cyber Fan Fest explodes into December. We can't bring you a live wrestling event in 2020, but we're bringing you a plethora of live interviews and virtual autograph signings to continue our tradition of updating Santa's GPS to find every kid's home. This Friday night, December the 11th, we're joined by the massive warlord in studio. This Saturday, December the 12th, Native American Tatanka joins us for the toy drive for the very first time. Then this Sunday, December the 13th, it's a doubleheader of future star superstars is the new Impact Wrestling World Champion Rich Swan joins us for the first time in studio in eight years, along with up-and-comer Wheeler Yuta, who recently competed in the Ring of Honor Pure Title Tournament, along with competing here in Boston Wrestling MWF. John Cena Sr. will also have a live episode and is working the phone lines on the North Pole to try and make this year's drive even bigger. Individual autographs and an all-inclusive VIP package is available online now. If you order your signed photos before or during the live appearances, the superstars will sign them on the air and then mail directly to your home. If you want a VIP package but you missed some of the superstars' live appearances, don't worry. They've signed enough photos and posters for us to ship to you by December the 19th. If that wasn't enough, we're working on items for our annual mega raffle where one lucky fan will walk away with a huge jackpot of prizes, all to benefit the toy drive and honor the memory of the late, great Paul Bearer, who helped myself and John Cena Sr. start this endeavor in 2012. Head on over to bostonwrestling.com to get your orders in now. Let's create smiles in 2020. This is Mick Foley. This is Harley Race. This is Shelton Benjamin. This is Mr. Wonderful Paul Orndorff. This is the Monster Abyss. And this is Daniel Bryan. This is JBL, and you're watching the MWF. Be there live. Wrestling fans, welcome to another Wrestling Insider. It's Dan Marotti, happy to be joined by uh, the man of the hour right now, Brian Nobbs. Brian, it took us a while, but you finally made it to Boston and made it to the studio. Yes, I mean, especially in 2020. I've been around a long time and never saw a year like this in my entire life. This has probably I'm, been I'm, the most limited travel you've had since you came out of the womb. Uh, well, I, <laughs> I, uh, good friends with uh, Willie Nelson for a long time, uh, through Dusty Rhodes in 88, and when I talked to Willie, he said, you know, and he's 87, never seen nothing like that this in his entire life, you know. Especially in a genre and, and, where travel and he's seen is. Him, and he's seen about everything, you yeah. know. When you're up there and you've been through all kinds of different stuff, but this one's just got to listen to what's going on. That's all I can say. We keep trucking along. That's yeah, all we can do. That's, that's it. all we can do. And I next year, praying that we'll be doing this, your show, you know. We'll be doing not only in studio, yeah. but we'll be having live wrestling events yeah, exactly. too. Exactly. And we'll exactly. be headed down to Tampa for WrestleMania. Oh yes. Having the big. Now, now, is that is that a? Because they were still saying L.A. Now are they definitely going to switch it back to Tampa? I don't think it, it's a definite yet, but from people that I've spoken with in Connecticut, it's a, it's very likely. Yeah, it's very because likely. L.A. is uh, they are very locked restricted. down and really, very uh, restricted yeah, no, right now. No, no uh, people at the football games or nothing. You know, if so. nothing else, Florida has been a little bit more laid yeah, back. And everybody's when it comes right to down that. there, developmental uh, in Orlando. Yeah. So you know, Florida a lot, is a lot almost of, a lot of the boys live down there oh, too. Yeah, you know, yeah. so. Florida is almost the new second home to WWE. Well, put it this way, a lot of guys live down there anyway because the Hulks do it. Hulks do everybody to move down <laughs> because when you were on the road 300 days a year, you wanted somewhere warm in that. You didn't want it raining or, you know, like it is today in Boston. Nothing against Boston, but I came from Tampa, Florida, where was, my wife thought it was cold, but it was only 68. <laughs> and uh, it was raining and it was freezing. And I'm glad I brought a coat this time. <laughs> I'd take 68 right about now. I don't know about you. Oh, yes. I'd it take was the very, 68. very, very nice. All right, wrestling fans, a lot of you uh, chimed in via Twitter, via email. 
You wanted to know Brian's thoughts on the passing of the late, great Pat Patterson recently, a man you worked with extensively in WWF. Yeah, that's, uh, that's a hard one. He's a, he was a genius in our business. Nobody knows it. And then, uh, you know, if people could see his work back in the day when he tagged with Ray Stevens, they were unbelievable. I mean, unbelievable. You're talking 50s and 60s. And Ray Stevens... Uh, and Wahoo at the time uh, helped bring me and SAG up and we started with Vern Gagne in AWA up in Minnesota and Ray was up there uh, working at the time and was Booker with Wahoo but Ray was there first and would come down to the camp and show us but he was, uh, he was a fantastic worker. Uh, Pat was just, a, you know, a, he, he actually was a genius. I mean, he came up with the Royal Rumble. Yeah. I mean, you know, I mean, so... Uh, people don't know the behind the scenes, but yeah, it's, that's, that, that was a hard one. And then, of course, only a month or two ago, or three months, we lost our good friend Animal. He was supposed to be in that very seat on November 14th. Yeah, yeah he was a good friend. We, we had a lot of good times with him and Hawk. They were good guys. See, we grew up with all of them guys. And uh, Kurt Henning, Mr. Perfect, was our mentor because... We grew up with Vern Gagne, and Brad Reagans trained us for Vern School, and he was an Olympic champion. So we were on Olympic mats for three months, and I was like, I didn't sign up for this. I'm getting stretched every day. And then when you couldn't even lift your arm, because Brad, almost like a Stu Hart camp, you know, or, you know, uh, Eddie Graham down in Florida had one like that. Uh, they had Mansuda, you know, he broke Hulkster's leg back in the day and yep. all that stuff. But, uh, yeah, man, it was... Uh, you know, no, no joke. We started with 22 people, and me and Sag were the only ones to survive the camp. But we lived on the bottom of Brad, so there was no <laughs> calling it a day off right, or nothing because yeah, yeah. he knew we were down there. And then our car broke, so we couldn't get the hell out of there even if we wanted to. <laughs> but we loved it. I mean, once we got, you know, we had everybody staying. I mean, uh, Shawn Michaels used to, you know, be our roommate, not only there, but in Tennessee. And then Marty would come in every now and again, would sleep on the floor. <laughs> so, but, uh, you know, just the guys we met just from that era, you know, and, uh, you know, uh, Pat wasn't there at the time, but Ray was. But uh, just, you're talking about Buddy Rose, Colonel De Beers, I mean, all the, uh, Nick Bockwinkel, all these guys that knew how to work and knew their psychology. And, you know, and then right after we went six months through the wrestling camp, you think we got right in the ring? Hell no, you had to drive the ring first. Then your referee, there was a, like a whole thing till you finally got in the ring, you know? And uh, for some reason they used me and SAG. We grew up together and usually they put a, a veteran and a young guy together, but they didn't for us and uh, you know, it worked and here we are today, you know, so. <laughs> Still going strong yeah. in 2020, 2021. Yeah, yeah. And hopefully it stays that yeah, way. Yeah, let's, let's hope. Uh, you know, they get a handle on this uh, crazy uh, 2020 and in 2021, we can get back to some kind of normalcy and, and have the fans out there again And because there ain't nothing like that. And I got to take my hat off to the guys today because it's actually, you know, hard to wrestle with <laughs> no fans there, you know, you're not, you're, you know, because you, you feed off that. That makes you have, you know, better matches and, you know, because you like to, if you're the bad guy and they're booing you, you're doing the right job. If you're the good guy and they're cheering you on, you know, you're doing your good job. But right. now, you, you know, it's kind of taken away. So, you know, I got that. You know, take my hat off to him right away. But uh, back to Pat, he's uh, he, was, he was marvelous. The last time I seen him, believe it or not, was uh, at uh, Rocky Johnson's funeral. Oh, really? Yeah, that's the last time I seen him. We talked, and he would always go, yay, yeah, yeah, you know, to talk in the Montreal, you know, French-Canadian. You know, he would always joke with me and Sag. But, yeah, me and Sag loved him. He was a good guy, man. He definitely was. And then, He cut kind of an unusual promo with that wake, didn't he? Um, I told. <laughs> it was pretty crazy. <laughs> <laughs> that's all I can say about that. It was uh, definitely a wrestler's funeral. I remember... Um his his wife Sheila called Tony Atlas that night and explained to him a lot of the craziness that went on at that wake. I guess it was kind of a an interesting experience, maybe. Yeah, it definitely was. And then you know, just like uh, 
you know, like football and baseball, wrestling it has its own fraternity of brothers. Exactly. And nobody ever heard anything because that's the way it is, you know. The, the people that were there, it wasn't for everybody. It was for certain, you know, you know, just about like wrestlers and, you know, and uh, Rocky married to uh, uh, Ada. And, uh, you know, so, you know, the Wild Samoans were there. I mean, you had a lot of, you know, people... You know, everybody was, you know, showed up. I mean, it was it was real good. I mean, it was a nice show of respect. And, and, yeah, and then uh, the Rock. I mean, you know, gave one heck of a, you know, thing. You know, a speech for his dad, and you know, it was really heartfelt. You know, and then the one thing that gets to him is his, he couldn't say bye to his dad. You know, so you know, because it happened so sudden, and he's the one that I was talking to you earlier. That told me about my knee replacement when I had that, you know, a year ago. The Rock or Rocky? Rocky. Oh, Rocky Johnson. Yeah, right, Rocky yeah. was there, and me and Sag were at a Comic Con in Orlando, and he looked at me, he goes, Knobs, and he knew us. We know Rocky all the way back from 87. We were all in Tennessee together. That's when Memphis, we babysit. Yeah. Yeah, that's when we babysit The Rock. Him and it would go on like, you know, like once a month or for like a dinner and would be watching. But it wasn't really babysitting because he was 14, 15. But yeah. we feed him some beers and, you know, <laughs> then Rocky would come down. You feed my kid beers? And, oh, no, Rocky. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so. But, uh, yeah, he was always r real close to us. And we always had good times every time we saw him. And he said that... Uh, no, that's infected, and SAG was on me, that's infected. So when I got home, I went right to, and they said, emergency room before you know it, getting this operated on, getting a new knee replacement, and oh, what a, you know, six weeks, you know, two weeks in the hospital, four weeks in rehab, and still kind of so-so. It's not, not quite all there yet, and then I needed one on my right side, but, you no, know, what do you, I, I what would do you never need bitch on the right side? another knee replacement. Oh, do you? Yeah, and then... Shoulder replacement. I'm, oh, yeah, wow. I can just go down a big list, but uh, right now I'm not doing anything. You know, staying away from the hospital scene and all that. And I'm kind of here in the studio relaxing. Yeah, exactly. Telling nice some, chair, comfortable. Some stories. Yeah, yeah. Cold beverage. Got me cold beverage over here. Yeah, I can't can't complain. You know, making new friends. That's what it's all yeah, about. Yeah, and uh, you know, like I told you, my good friend Pat Catino gave me a double thumbs up. I talked to him before I came here, and for those who don't know who he is. He owned the world's gym here in Boston for years. And Hulkster met him first, and he was Hulk's good friend. And then Hulk brought all the boys there. And every time we would come around the area, we'd work out over there. And, and Pat would treat us first class. And he said, you're a first class dude. Thumbs up. And well, once you know, he, once he told him. Oh, because he's such a good friend of mine. All he had to say was that, because this is the first time I ever met you. Right. And I said, well, you know, any guy that says that, you're instantly good friends with me. There I, don't, you go. I didn't even have to meet you, you know. But now that I met you, you know. That's kind of the way the fraternity and even the uh, extended fraternity works. Pat's I'm a great I'm kind human of like, being. Uh, like that it's just me and you because if Sags was here, I wouldn't be able to get a word in there twice. And he said the same thing about <laughs> you. <laughs> that's how you. That's what happens when you know each other since you're 10 years old. Do you want to know how that actually concept almost came to be? Marty Gennetti, of all people, yeah. uh, being the wise sage that he is, said it's almost like when you have a group of people and you're, it's at nighttime and you're sitting around the water and you're looking at the moon's reflection off the water, and someone says to you, point to the moon, and you point to it right there, and it's where you see it. <laughs> yeah. If I say to you, point to the moon, you might point there, and that's where you see yeah. it. So even though you may have lived things and experienced the same things, you may see it in different ways and different it's points like, of view. You know, I know uh, some you know, Hall of Fame football players, baseball players, I mean, uh, you know, uh, hockey players and uh they all have their fraternity of brothers you know you and that's the way wrestling is it's that close of a knit family and uh you know we all respect each other and uh you know sometimes you get guys that don't but you know then you don't you b bother with what right. it is what it is you know so but uh usually everybody gets along and uh you know I'm, I'm still talking to everybody from rick flair to bret hart uh, to the hulkster to you know uh, you know, everybody that's still around. I mean, I, just talk, I did, did a, uh, makes, puts a tear to my eye, but I did a, did a video, uh, Animal's Wife, Kim, uh, told me to do an interview for her 60th. 
So I gave him, and Norton, Scott Norton did a one too, and did the one kind of like me. I was going, oh, what a rush, you're 60 now, giving him crap that he was 60. And then three days later, he passed, you know, like, just like. I was really looking forward to having him with us. Yeah. Here in this studio. And Hawk, he was crazy. Well, if, you yeah. asked, if you asked Hawk what he was doing, he'd say, anything I want. And he said, all right, Hawk. <laughs> he was a good man, too. But all from Minneapolis, all them guys were from Minnie. I don't know, you know what was in the water up in Minnesota. No, there's, you know, and Wayne Bloom's still, you know, from the Beverly Brothers. Yeah. He's, still, he's still around, but a lot of them have passed on already. Yeah. But Barry Darso. You know, he just moved out of Minnesota. Man, he's he's, he's uh, living with his, uh, not living, but he's building a house for his, his son is. Uh, Barry, uh, moved, that, Barry, Barry moved, moved out of Minnesota? He moved over and bought a house on the lake uh, uh, with his son, Dakota, who, who's a deputy in Michigan. And up, upper, the upper, uh, like, uh, uh, I'm not sure if it's up by uh, uh, kind of like Kellogg or something like that. Barry lives in Michigan now? Yeah. I just spoke to him within yeah. the past few weeks. He didn't mention that. Yeah. I didn't he know sold, that. He sold his business, and I'm not sure if he moved all the way yet, but he said he was getting a place. And, oh, good for him. You know, and, I didn't and, know and, uh, that. Dakota, I, I, you know, he came and tra trained at my school when I used to have the Nashville School of Wrestling for a while, and, you know, I was happy with that. I got a couple guys in TNA, and uh, the one guy... Um, and then he screwed up, but he won the Tough Enough contest. I forget, uh, he was a, t a tall guy. He was actually, uh, he, is, uh, he was related to Dan Spivey. But, oh, really? Uh, he played for uh, Florida Atlantic football. And I, I taught him, and then from there, Dan got him in there to do the Tough Enough, and he was the one that won it, remember? And then Stone Cold stunned him, and then something happened, I guess, he, the, I the drug test or something. I know exactly who you mean, but I can't think of his name. Yeah, I can I, picture him. And I, he, was, he was in my school for like six months, and I'm, I, I can't remember his name. The, the funny but he's enough, a nice guy. The runner-up used to wrestle for us, Luke Robinson. He was trained by Tony Atlas up in Maine. Yeah. So isn't that funny? I didn't Tony's know a you had guy. a connection. Tony's, How about him? He still looks great. Tony's with us every Tuesday night at 10 <laughs> o'clock. Tuesdays with he Tony. He still looks fantastic. I tell I you, said, uh, you know, he's a good guy too. He's another good, good friend of ours. You know? I but you know what? It's a great thing. Again, we talk about having a platform like this studio for the guys. You know, Tony, I don't know if you're familiar what happened with his wife, but in June of 19, she had a stroke. She's been wow. hospitalized ever since. They lost her income. They take all of her social security check except forty dollars every month. Then the coronavirus hits. Tony can't wrestle. Uh, he's had very few appearances outside of this TV studio. Well, the one thing that's kept him going is actually his artwork that he does. We've been able to get him some bookings from the great fans that watch these shows. So, you know, uh, like I said in previously, WWE, they can present history however they want to. They bought it. It's their right. But there's a lot of other guys out there with great experiences, yeah. great memories, great legends, great stories. And this is a great place to share well, them so we can keep them remembered forever. I'm... Uh Working right now, uh, we're pitching a show, and I uh, don't want to say too much about it, but okay. it's uh, it's uh, kind of like, uh, you know, what you're talking about now. Good. You know what I mean? Good. So, yeah. We'll talk about that at Kowloon later Yeah, on. yeah, Thought definitely. Our good friend yeah. Andy Wong. Yeah. I mean, I'm kind of interested to know now. You, yeah, you piqued yeah. my curiosity. Yeah, well, you know, I got sick of, uh, you know, watching uh, uh the dark side of the ring. I was on the Jimmy Schnooker on the After Dark, you know, and all, I, I, you know, okay, let's. It's an intriguing show, but all it does is kind of cut down the wrestlers, you know, like this happened to Dino Bravo. This guy did this. Or this guy did, you know, Jimmy. Uh, you know, 32 years later, they got him for murder, and you know, I don't know what happened there, you know, but they, they bring up like all the bad stuff, and they never. And I was going, well, wait a minute. You know, there's a lot of guys out there, you know, that lo love this business and the fans love this business. And, you know, all you're ever telling is, you know, it's always a bad story. No matter what, it's a bad story. You know, like the tragedy so you that happened to Owen and all that yeah, stuff. Oh, it's like, God, yeah. yeah, well, you know, it just, you know, it just. You want instead of the dark side of the ring, you want the light side of the ring. Exactly. And there's a lot of fun and a lot yeah, of fun. Exa exactly. There's a, and, and to be fair, there is a lot of doom and gloom in our crazy oh, yeah. industry. Yeah. But there is a lot of fun, fun. that the people at home could that, not that, possibly that imagine. <laughs> no. 
Unless they've hey, been in it and lived it. Drive around with the Iron Sheik for about four months. Well, back in the day. I when just he would, remember he, the one car ride, and that was more would, than enough. He would, uh, because he was from, you know, he came from Iran, but he, he, he you know, worked for Vern. But then he was used to that cold weather. He'd make us put down the windows. Me and Sag were young back then, and we are freezing. We were driving up to North Dakota somewhere, and he's slapping his chest and being the sheik. You know? <laughs> and we said, sheik, can we please close the window? You know? And then when we roomed with him, he'd, he'd have the door open you know, to get that cold air in. And I'm like, it's freezing in here. Me and Sag were shivering. <laughs> and he was doing squats. Oh he, oh, he loves to do those squats. <laughs> the life's in time of Hossein Khosrow Vaziri. I think when the time comes, Brian, we could probably do an entire episode just on that man. You know, I, I, uh, I call him all the time, and he thanks me. He calls me and says, Nam's Bubba and Sag's Bubba. But he, he really thanks me because he goes, no one really gets in contact with him no more or nothing like that. And I always cheer him up, you know. You know, they, it's so hard for him to, to get around now. Yeah, where he sees, yeah. Ever since, uh, you hate to say it, but ever since he became sober, all of the pain in that body uh, caught up with him so much. And yeah, it, it's been tough. But, but it look, kills people don't me. realize kills me. he did the real deal, like Brad did. I mean, Brad Reagan, he's getting another shoulder replacement, like his third one. He's got knees. Both of his, I call him a bionic man, but... Cosgrove, you know, the Sheik's the same way. He, I think he won a gold medal for Iran back in 68 or something. And said Greco-Roman, that's, that's, yes, big time tough. And, uh, you know, that's the real deal there. Yep. So even before pro wrestling, you know, that t takes a wear and tear on your body. I mean, even Kurt, Kurt Angle, you know, yeah, got a lot of the injuries from, you know, when he won and the with gold. With a broken and, neck yeah. when he won it. Ah, yeah, exactly, yeah. you know. And he still went on to, you know, wrestle after. That's one tough SOB. And he's a, he's a great guy, you know what I mean? Well, what a good guy, you know. So uh, I uh, started a, uh, a comp company, and I was doing the 10th man for the race. They asked if I'd do the 10th man, so I, because they weren't getting people. And they played Boston and the Yankees. More ba Boston fans than Yankee fans right. showed up at Tropicana, so they wanted to change that when the new regime came in. Um, uh, Sternberg, uh, you know, and uh, they asked me and like be like the guy and do videos. So I did videos and I went to almost every game, and I did that for like four years. And in, in uh, I think it was '07, they asked me to do a Legends of Wrestling night. And I got the guys together, and we signed autographs, and we did three matches afterwards by home plate. And we had Steiner, we had, you know, uh, Brett the one time, we had, and then all of a sudden I was getting calls from uh, Florida Marlins wanted it, Pittsburgh Pirates, this and that, and then I made a, a company, and, uh, you know, we've been doing, doing pretty good. We uh, sold out Detroit two years in a row, a, a hockey arena, 5,000. Then we did City Field. Where yeah, Mets, Mets play, yeah. that drew to almost uh, 12,000 people. And it so was an independent. You're and, still very active in the world of professional wrestling. Well, beyond. It was something like, uh, for some reason, that 80, 90s era, because I guess the, the characters, I don't know, but the fans still love the, the hacksaws and the, you know, Ted DiBiase's and Jake the Snakes and the, you know. There's more of an interest in that, I hate to say it, as there is right now with the current product. I believe there's more wrestling fans out there that don't watch current wrestling than that there are that do. You uh, know, the, the, the declines across the board before coronavirus, look at WWE, their television ratings hit rock bottom. Yeah. Merchandising was down. WWE network subscriptions were down. Merchandising was down. And I'm yeah. a w, proud yeah. WWE yeah. stockholder. I want them to invest right. the money wisely beyond someone that enjoys you know, just watching wrestling. Well, they, def they definitely, you know, everybody says, what's your favorite match? And us against, uh, you know, we have so many, it's hard to, to, to mention just one. But right. the one that stands out is definitely one against the Hart Foundation, WrestleMania 7. Because that's what labeled us and stamped us at the time. And even my pop, you know, uh, would say, uh, 
you know, I was in AWA, and then we're here and there, but he never got to see that. We, we were from Pennsylvania, so mm -hmm. he would just get to see the WWF. And that's all he kept on saying. You're not in the WWF yet, kid. You're not in the WWF. And then we finally got there, and, you know, it, you know, it's kind of... He was very proud. Yeah, but not when I got home. He, was, he would always say, what are you doing <laughs> home? Get a job. <laughs> you know, the good old blue-collar old man, he kept me in line all the time. And my uncle, too, my Uncle Ruben, another... Uh, crazy guy from the there was something in the water where me and sag grew up too because there's a lot of uh, you know crazy uh guys but not everybody got into wrestling but uh, our friends that we still you know talk all the time and stuff like that and you're talking you know we all graduated together in 81 so phew, man i'm getting old you know what's <laughs> funny i didn't know that you i knew you and jerry had, had quite a history but i didn't know you went all the way back to little league uh, the, yeah and in little league he had only half a tooth with a tooth missing now from the thing. <laughs> and I said, what, what happened to you? And he said, my brother shot it out with a BB gun. I went, I think we're going to be friends. <laughs> <laughs> that was when we were 10. He was first baseman and couldn't stretch. And the, the guys would throw the ball and would hit the ground and hit him in the face. And I was in left field. And I would have to, even if it was right in front of me, I would have to try to make it a spectacular play. Sometimes I would drop it, and then the coach would be going, what are you doing? It was right there. Why do you have to try to dive for it? You know, I was always trying to do something. But, we, uh, yeah, we've been friends for a long time. And, and what's crazy is our great-great-grandfathers used to ride motorcycles together back in the 30s. Isn't that something? Yeah. Wow. And when he came to my house, my grandmother said, Saggy, are you a Saganovich? And he goes, yes. Was your uh, great-grandfather, uh, you know, and he, and he said, yes, uh, uh, he was. He goes, well, he hung around with my husband. And my, my dad, my great-grandfather uh, died when he was young. He was only 30 uh, oh, on wow. a motorcycle accident, no helmet at the time, oh. Indian motorcycle. They were crazy back then, but... Uh, Yes, I got some stories on that, you know, from the, but that's how close, you know, knit the, the families are and that's all great. that stuff. And still yeah. friends to this day, huh? Yeah. That's something. Yeah. All right, before we go in this little uh, tidbit of uh, remembrance, any final thoughts on the great Pat Patterson? A man, is, uh, did you ever hear him sing My Way? Oh, yeah. He, he loved My he Way. He loved uh, karaoke. Oh, you get karaoke. You know, and then almost like uh, Masa Saito, he used to like singing, I left my heart in San Francisco, you know. and he, oh, he was a karaoke he, guy Yeah, but he, he didn't sing too good, but he oh. was, yeah. <laughs> but he was, he was, he loved that song, but just like. Well, he uh, almost left his heart at that McDonald's with Ken Patera, oh, but yeah. that's a different story for a different <laughs> well, time. Well, he, he wasn't, he was not there, he was at the room. Ken kind of. Oh, that's uh, right. He uh, was back at the room, room when the police came. Yeah, that, yeah, I, that's I, what happened. That's right. Yeah, but anyway, Pat, Pat was. Just a genius in this business. He's going to be missed, and uh, you know he he was he was there for a long time. I mean, he was with Vince for since the early eighties. Yeah, and, yeah. They, and came up with the ideas and what a mind for this business. So he's you know, and he was always a, happy and throwing jokes and you know, good guy. Was you know? he helpful to you when you guys came in? Oh yeah, oh yeah. He he told right there. You know, when he watched, he'd call you aside and. You know, tell you what's going on. You know what I mean? And we were uh, taught, you know, if you want to ask, ask some people because some of the, you know, uh, big legends and stuff won't give you advice if you don't want to ask. They're right. not going to come up to you. But, but Pat would come up to you because, you know, he was working on the other side and, you know, would say, hey, you should try this or maybe try that or, you know. So, uh, but yeah, he was always helpful, you know, but. Uh, just too much, and then we lost. Uh, that was I went to that funeral too. But uh, we were all signing at the main event in New York, and the guy brought me and Sag in, and he brought me and Gene and Pat in, and oh. them two together. Oh God, A lot it's of just fun. funny. Oh yeah, because they're always at each other, going back and forth. You know what I mean? They're always nip nipping at each other. And they were right next to us. Oh, they had us laughing the whole time we were signing, but. You know, oh, you uh, made it to Mean Gene Services, too? Oh, yeah. Yeah. We had tried to get him to come into the studio not too long before he passed away, too. Another one who's, I would have loved to have sat here and documented some of his career, you oh, know? Oh, and the stories he has, 
He was around for a long time too, you know. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's a Minneapolis. Minneapolis, another Minnesota guy. That's yeah. right. Started out yeah. as a DJ Started, and yeah. wound up yeah. in the world yeah. of professional wrestling. Yes, sir. And uh, but uh, you know, it's it's just, just you, so many lately. You know, I mean, boom, 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 boom. You go, what the heck? You know what I mean? I mean, even you know, we lost Bundy. We lost. I mean, we lost a lot of people this year. If you Kamala, really think about it, yeah, Kamala. Ago, yeah. We just lost him. You know, and he was a what a he was a gentle giant. Another and man I, that sat in your very seat here in the studio. Yeah. Yeah. We did a nice three-hour piece with what him. What a what a nice guy. Yeah. Gentle, Good human gentle being. giant, really really nice, and that gimmick he made some money. You know, now that, him, that him and Hogan made some be, money oh, with, yeah. all over the place. They you know? had a big house show. Oh run yeah. During Hogan's peak oh, in '86 yeah. and '87. Yeah. Yeah. But well, like I, I, like I was gonna tell you though, with the. Uh, you know, like he's the 10th man for the race. Oh, yeah, okay. Okay, so <laughs> they get me to come up here when we're playing you guys. And then it was the, I think we had this three to one. It was the fifth game. If they win it, they're going to the World Series. Well, oh, 2008. Well, okay, yeah, yeah. yeah, and they got me great seats. And Pat went with us, and we had this Ray Hawk shirts. And now, we Pat, were, Pat Catino. Oh, okay. Yeah, and, uh, and, well, I had these Rayhawk shirts made up, and I had my hair purple. And, man, the first inning, some guy right in front of me threw a beer in my face. But we were only, like, ten rows up from And the other guy was asking, how did you get these seats? Because they were usually, uh, you know, season ticket holders, right. you know, the ones that right there where you're up front. And I said, well, they got them for us, you know. And then uh, in the seventh inning, 18 cops came up and – uh, they escorted me out of uh, Fenway for my own safety because the U's were losing at the time. So they were afraid the fans because I already had beer thrown on me, every, <laughs> every piece of hot dogs off my head, and I had my wife with me, you know, so she was getting pelted and that. But I'm used to it because, you know, when I wrestled the garden back right. in the day, uh, you know, it was, it was, you know, you get everything thrown at you. And Katino wore a on. Devil Ray shirt? What's that? Catino wore a Devil Ray he shirt? He wore a, um, a Ray Hawks, my, my shirt that I had made, but it had the Tropicana field behind it. It had my face with the uh, thing, and it said Ray Hawk. I'm ashamed of the man. And I yet, love well, he got, You know how much uh, 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 heat he got over it? But no. Because it was on the news when they escorted oh. me out. And, they, and, and then, it, then someone switched the story like I got kicked out, and I didn't. They kicked me. The cops were scared that they were going to get attacked. And then I was out. Side taking pictures with all the, of the police, <laughs> and you hear this big roar, and that's when Big Poppy hit the grand slam. You guys came back, then went to Tampa. We lost game mm. six, and then we finally won game seven in Tampa. I'll never you forget I mean? that night. I remember yeah. exactly where I was. Yeah. But you know what? Hey, the Red Sox have won four world championships yeah. in this century. Fans can't complain. That, that's a pretty good but, percentage. But that, that stadium, that's, that's like a... Cathedral right there, you know what I mean. What well, do you go to the Fenway. Rays game still? Uh, you know what? I haven't been for a while. You know, after uh, Coach Madden left, you know, and then you know, me and him became good friends, and he won with Chicago, you know. Uh, uh, so uh, I, I go on occasions, and they asked me to come over, but not like I was. When I was going like 60, 70 games. But, oh, wow. Yeah. Oh, geez, yeah. I wish I was yeah, buddies were, with you then. I would have been going with you. Well, and then uh, uh, what's uh, your announcer? Is it Remy? Jerry Remy, yeah, yep, that, we, we, uh, and I didn't really know him too good, but I had a, uh, one of my friends who lives from Boston, uh, Rick McIntosh, and and I we we always would go up to see uh, Dwayne Stacks and them, and he went over and introduced me to him, and I says, "Nice to meet you, sir," this and that, and my boy here from from up here, he was went totally crazy, and you know when we when we. Uh, when we're going downstairs, he goes, you don't even know who that is. And I didn't at the time because we never got Boston down there. Right. You know, unless when we played, we didn't hear the announcer. The announcer was Dwayne Stacks, and I forget the pitcher that used to be there. But, uh, yeah, it was a, a lot of fun. You know what I mean? It was. Uh, they used to put you on the Boston broadcasts, and Remy would commentate over you yeah. heckling the Red Sox yeah. on we, the Boston Well, because I was games. always yeah. sitting there, always had me in them good seats, yeah, that yeah, thing, yeah. you know. But right after they got uh, won the World Series, you know, that won the World Series, after they 
you know, played the Phillies. Yep. Well, that's where we and Sag are from. So I was getting, then they asked me to go to Philly, and I went, oh. <laughs> I said, I'm from Philly. I'll never get from my car to the stadium with any Ray stuff on because them fans are just crazy. That's you a know? different breed. Yeah, it definitely is. It's a different breed. And they threw snowballs on Santa Claus. I remember, you know? <laughs> right? Yep. All right, before we go, Brian, any final memories of Pat Patterson, the man that did it his way? You know what? Uh, I could just say that uh, he always gave great advice. He was a true legend. And if people could ever look back, it has to be, WWE has to have it on the network. But if you watch when he wrestled, because he was amazing. He, he really was. He was a, just an amazing wrestler. He had an amazing mind for this business. And, and he's going to be dearly missed, that's for sure. You know? uh, all right, wrestling fans. And I'll say this, Brian. You're going to be dearly missed until the next episode we tape. That's We've it. had a heck of a lot of fun. We hope to turn Brian into a regular, much like we have with Tony Atlas, with Marty Jannetty, and some of the other great legends that pour in and out of this humble tv studio uh if you see this before the big day comes december the 25th don't forget our paul bearer holiday headlocks toy drive cyber fan fest continues through the big day you can continue to honor this man's memory and update santa claus's gps to find every kid's house this Definitely. holiday for That's my awesome partner in crime brian knobs i'm dan marotti until we see you again folks you and yours be well stay healthy good night stay nasty Wrestling fans, can you feel it? The ninth annual Paul Bearer Holiday Headlocks Toy Drive Cyber Fan Fest explodes into December. We can't bring you a live wrestling event in 2020, but we're bringing you a plethora of live interviews and virtual autograph signings to continue our tradition of updating Santa's GPS to find every kid's home. This Friday night, December the 11th, we're joined by the massive warlord in studio. This Saturday, December the 12th, Native American Tatanka joins us for the toy drive for the very first time. Then this Sunday, December the 13th, it's a doubleheader of future star superstars is the new Impact Wrestling World Champion Rich Swan joins us for the first time in studio in eight years, along with up-and-comer Wheeler Yuta, who recently competed in the Ring of Honor Pure Title Tournament, along with competing here in Boston Wrestling MWF. John Cena Sr. will also have a live episode and is working the phone lines on the North Pole to try and make this year's drive even bigger. Individual autographs and an all-inclusive VIP package is available online now if you order your signed photos before or during the live appearances. The superstars will sign them on the air and then mail directly to your home. If you want a VIP package but you missed some of the superstars' live appearances, don't worry. They've signed enough photos and posters for us to ship to you by December the 19th. If that wasn't enough, we're working on items for our annual mega raffle where one lucky fan will walk away with a huge jackpot of prizes, all to benefit the toy drive and honor the memory of the late, great Paul Bearer, who helped myself and John Cena Sr. start this endeavor in 2012. Head on over to bostonwrestling.com to get your orders in now. Let's create smiles in 2020.